morning, everyone. Michelle Arnott here at Diamond Rock Glass Studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's Monday morning, and I usually use Mondays to catch up on things and to make a plan for the week um, and just prepare myself for the week. This morning, it's the day after Valentine's Day. I still have um, things in my display windows left from Christmas and Valentine's Day. So I want to um, decide how I want to change out my windows um, with the four seasons. I try to keep up to date. So Valentine's Day is over. Um, spring, it seems a little too soon to, to swap out for spring. Um, but I do want to get something new in the windows. Um, and I did measure this morning. I have 137 square feet of window space. And that doesn't include my entry door, which is all windows. Um, but I don't put anything on that door. So I have a lot of space and I really try to keep things looking new and fresh and inviting. Um, so one way to do that, and I am going to share this with you. This is not a kit. I'm not introducing a kit at the end of this, but I'm going to try and make a short video and also challenge myself to get these projects done by the end of the week. So um, I'm gonna uh, share with you what I'm doing this week. So one way to um, quickly uh, make uh, some beautiful artwork to go in the windows is to use bevels. Um, there are small bevels um, and large bevels. So basically, here's some bevel work that I have done um, recently, well, in the last year. Here's a shooting star. This star, shooting star, is a bevel. When I get the bevel, it comes looking like this. So I take it out of the package, I foil it, and then I put it together, and then I draw the pattern for the outside. Um, here's another bevel that I've done. Um, and again, these are fairly quick compared to some of the other stained glass pieces that you can do. Um, the treble cloth uh, is the bevel. Here's another one that I've done. Um, and all you need to do is uh, get a pretty bevel and then some pretty glass to go with it. Um, all these patterns I have drawn. Um, but the first step is to have your bevel. Um, and whenever you purchase a bevel, it's going to come with this pattern, with a pattern of whatever bevel it is that you bought. This one I'm going to do because St. Patrick's Day is the next holiday coming up. So... I've got the bevels for this pattern here. Like I said, the first thing that I'm gonna do is foil those bevels together and solder them together, at least tack them together, and then build my pattern, draw my pattern around that. I don't go off of this pattern that is included with the bevels that you buy, um, just because it's not always accurate. Um, so it's better to take the bevels out, foil and solder them, and then draw the pattern around them. So my challenge this week is to get this bevel and panel done. Um, and that's a small bevel. It's only four pieces. You can buy large clusters of bevels. For example, I'm going to do some large pieces. Here's a very large one. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through each step. And I'm going to try and do this fairly quickly. So you're not going to um, be watching me do the entire panel. But I'll show you the basics. Here's another one that I plan on doing this week. Here is another one I plan on doing this week. These are all large, um, and I'm going to pair it with some fairly expensive glass, which I'm going to talk about also. Um, I'm going to introduce you to some Yakagani glass, and I'm also going to use some Euroboros and I think some Kokomo. So I'll, I'll touch a little bit on the different kinds of glass that you can use, but um, each manufacturer uh, has different glass that they produce, and... It varies greatly. Um, there's a lot to say about all the different kinds of glass. Um, and this last bevel that I'm going to show you, uh, these bevels that I have here, um, the price range of bevels ranges anywhere from under $10 to upwards of $100 to $200. A few of them, if you get really high end, are three or $400. You can really spend a little or a lot on bevels. And I happen to... Um, and this is a great way to acquire stained glass supplies. If you find somebody or someone knows that you do stained glass and they happen to be getting out of the hobby or they know someone who's getting out of the hobby. So that happened to me. There's a gentleman um, that lives here in my community or the community I live in, I should say. Um, and he's kind of retiring from the stained glass 
uh, hobby of his. So he had a bunch of bevels, um, which I purchased from him. Um, so some of these bevels he's had for many years, um, and the packaging isn't great, so I couldn't actually sell it, but I can certainly use it. The bevels inside of this packaging um, are in beautiful condition, but as you can see, the packaging on this isn't great. So that's not something I would sell, but I'm going to use it. So those are the bevels I'm challenging myself to make this week. So I'm gonna shut this off for now, and I'll show you what the first step is. Um, well, actually, maybe I won't show this, but I'm going to open up each package and then I am going to foil each piece and then solder, at least tack solder each piece. Okay, so here's the first bevel cluster um, that I'm going to open up. On the back of this, taped on the back, was um, the diagram that shows you how these pieces fit together because when they're in the package, they're separated so they're not chipping and rubbing against each other. So this is actually the first time I'm taking a look at this diagram to really see what it's gonna look like when the pieces are all together. So this is really nice to have, so I get a much better idea, and that's about how big it's gonna be. But remember, this isn't an exact, true representation of what it will look like. How these actually fit together are not always the way that they look here. But that's a really good idea of the size and how it's gonna look. So I wanted to open this one up first. I'm just using a little X-Acto knife uh, because the packaging is not good and I kind of want to throw it away. Okay, so it's all out of the packaging and I'm putting it over the pattern. This one is looking like it's fitting up pretty good over this pattern and there are different manufacturers of bevels. Maybe some of the patterns are more true to what the actual glass bevels are. Good Tuesday morning. I just wanna show you how far I got by the end of the day yesterday. I didn't get real far, but I did get these two foiled and soldered. I did more than just tack them. But once I'm done foiling each piece, I do like to at least tack it together right away just because as I'm placing the pieces down, I'm getting them exactly where I want them. These two didn't have a pattern for me to place over it, so I just had to um, fit them together as best as I could. And since I'm drawing my own pattern, they don't really necessarily need to follow the pattern, just like this one. See, I didn't get any further. I'm gonna get these foiled next. Um, here's this one out of the package, and then there's my shamrock. So let's get busy foiling today and see how far we can get today. So now I have all of the bevel clusters foiled and um, these three here are ready to tack solder and I'm going to show you what tack soldering is because these I did not tack solder. I literally just soldered the entire thing but as you can see I did not go on the outside. The outside of the, these bevels are going to be traced so I don't want any extra solder getting in the way. Um, so on this one, I'm going to show you what tack soldering is, just in case you don't know. And I have these together as good as they're going to possibly get together. And there are some gaps, and there's nothing I can do about that. Um, like right down here, there's some gaps. There's actually some gaps throughout it. So that will just fill in with solder. And then on my shamrock, I wanted to show you why it's important to put your bevels together um, and not use the actual pattern as your pattern piece for your complete panel. For example, this heart here 
is really much more heart shaped than the actual bevel glass is. Um, it fits pretty close, but um, I learned this when I did a very large piece, the eagle actually that you saw in the intro, that eagle that I did. Um, I used the paper pattern as my pattern and it caused a huge headache once I tried to put those pieces together because the eagle paper pattern and the eagle bevel pattern were very different. So this isn't very different, but it's different enough. Um, and just based on my own experience, um, I would always advise to foil and solder your bevels first. So let's go ahead to the next step. Okay, so I am just going to show you with this bevel what tack soldering is. You probably know what tack soldering is, um, but just in case you don't, um, it's wherever two or more pieces meet, that's where I'm going to join them. And for these bevel pieces, you really don't need to do more than the tack soldering. It's just so your, your entire piece will move as one unit. <laughs> Okay, so now you can see this is one unit. I can move it around and actually this is all you need to do for the bevels because I can move this entire piece onto a piece of paper now and trace it. Um, and then I'll be able to build my pattern and once I build my glass around it, then I can finish soldering the entire piece. So this is enough um, tack soldering, or feel free to do the entire soldering of the piece, but do not go on these edges because you need to trace this onto your paper. Good morning, everyone. Today, I thought I would start out with a really beautiful piece of glass. I'm gonna show you a sheet of Euroboros by Yakagani. Um, so here is a six foot sheet of this glass in the window. As you can see, it's a really beautiful piece of glass. This is 24 by 36 inches, um, so it's six feet uh, large. And um, this has got reds, blues, greens, yellows in it. It's so beautiful. The glass industry in the last five years has been what has been described as very tumultuous. Um, and like I said, there's a lot that I could say about glass. Um, Basically in 2016, Spectrum and Euroboros uh, closed their production. Um, and another company called Oceanside bought their, uh, basically their recipes and their equipment for manufacturing glass. Um, and Oceanside has been around since 1992. They're in California. Um, more recently, they outgrew their their base in California, so they bought um, production in Tijuana, Mexico. Um, so like I said, they bought Spectrum and they bought Euroboros. Um, and then recently in 2020, Yakagani, uh, which is in Oregon, um, Oceanside approached Yakagani and said, will you produce Euroboros? So um, now Yakagani is producing Euroboros. I know it's all super confusing and I thought, can I explain this? Do I know it? Um, and you know it if you can explain it. And I can kind of sort of explain it, but if you really want to know more, I would Google the different manufacturers. But um, what the glass world used to be 20, 25 years ago is not how it is now. Spectrum um, used to be inexpensive glass and super easy to cut. And um, I think probably the most prevalent because it is affordable and easy to cut and it comes in so many beautiful colors. So, um, and it's really due to the U.S. Environmental Agency played a big role in air quality and Spectrum couldn't afford to put all those things in place. So Oceanside bought them, but now um, what is considered past Spectrum is now fusible. So the price went up. So the, the way the glass industry is right now is completely different than what it was five years ago. So if you want to know more, I will try and talk about it a little bit as it comes up, but um, there's a lot to know. But anyways, this piece of glass that I'm using today, 
um, is called Euroboros by Yakagani. So Yakagani is producing it, is manufacturing it. Um, but Oceanside is still playing a part in that. So like I said, if you want to know more, go ahead and Google it. Um, it's kind of confusing. So anyways, it's a beautiful piece of glass. It's slightly iridized and I'm going to hold it up so you can maybe see it. It's got a lot of beautiful colors in here. Um, and this is a brand new piece of glass. In fact, when my wholesaler got it in, they called me and said, do you want us to save you a piece? And I said, yes. So even if I wanted to order more of it right now, it's um, out of stock. I can't get more, but I'm really excited to use it. I don't hoard glass hardly ever here in the studio. Once in a while, I see a piece and I'm like, I need to use that and I keep it. So I can eventually get more. So if um, any of my customers want to get this glass, I will be able to get it in the future. And then this morning I was deciding which bevel do I want to start with. Uh, so I decided I'll just start with the bevel that I finished first. So this was the one that I finished first. Um, and I had already decided that um, this uh, Eurobros is what I'm going to pair with this bevel. So now um, we're going to draw the pattern. So I will turn this off and then I'll show you how to draw a pattern. Okay, I hope you can see okay. It's really bright outside. Uh, it's a beautiful day, even though the last few days it has been 35 plus below zero here in Tomahawk. Um, but it is supposed to warm up this weekend, so I'm excited about that. We'll do some snowmobiling. So I placed my bevel on this red uh, paper. Um, you just need any paper that's large enough. And then I placed these two squares. Um, and I did measure from this tip. We got about an inch there, and so about an inch there. And then in the center, I've got about four inches there and four inches there. So I'm going to start by drawing my outer uh, lines. And I know these squares aren't big enough to reach all the way, so I'll have to use a ruler to make up that difference. But for, this is the first step, is we want to decide how large we want our piece. And this, not including the frame, just the inside portion, we're already at about 28 and a half to about 17 and a half. But I really love this glass and I wanna, I wanna showcase enough of the glass and make sure all the colors are in there. So I wanted to make it a little bit bigger. The bevel is kind of large, so it's taking up quite a bit of space. So anyway, I decided to go about this big. Um, and then once we add the frame, um, it's gonna make it even larger. And I'll show you that part later. I usually do the inside first. I do consider the outside frame because you can have a two inch beveled frame. You can have a two inch glass frame. You can have a one inch. So those are options you can decide once you get the inside part done. But you do want to consider um, that you are going to have another inch to two inches to even two and a half inches once you add either a wood frame or a zinc frame. So you, you want, um, to consider all those things. So I went ahead and drew that so I can take these off and now I'm gonna extend the lines just with a ruler. Um, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this back on and fill it in with this. We wanna make sure that these 90 degree angles are very accurate. That's gonna be really important for the framing part because um, you're gonna be cutting 90 degree angles um, with your frame and it really needs to be the right angles in your corners. So let's go ahead and use a square and make these corners here. And then I'll do the same down here. Okay, so very important part, we gotta trace our bevel. We need to trace our bevel, so we really carefully do this. You cannot shift this at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace the entire bevel. Okay, I think I got it. Let's see how that turned out. Perfect. So the first thing I might wanna do, I actually want a longer um, ruler or uh, T-square. 
So here's a longer straight edge that I'm going to use um, to draw this center line. And I'm just going to line up the tip of this side of the bevel to the tip of this side of the bevel to make it as straight as possible. So here's going to be um, my first two lines right there and there. And it's not perfect, and I know I've said this before, nothing in stained glass is ever perfect, perfect. I used to be much more of a perfectionist, but I've learned not to be so much. Um, as long as, you know, it's pretty accurate, um, I don't worry about things being perfect. Um, but you might be different. So um, maybe you want things to be perfect so you can, you know, find your own way of doing this so things are more perfect. Um, I'm not a super perfectionist. So now I'm noticing that I could do a line like this. You know, you'll learn as you do this, there's, there's gonna be different ways that you can um, draw your pattern. But basically we need to separate, separate these outside pieces into cuttable pieces with glass. So I think I'm, I'm gonna start with this. And if I decide I don't like it, I can uh, just, do it over, um, but I'm gonna start with this. So right now I'm just um, trying to make sure that every piece that I'm drawing um, is cuttable um, that it's not too long and thin. I, I want pieces that are gonna be um, big enough to be um, not delicate. Um, I don't want it to be super delicate. So let's see. I think I'm looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna look over this a little more carefully. Let me put the bevel back in here. I don't know if this is gonna help at all, but I'll just look at it with the bevel in here. Um, I hope you can see this pretty good. I'm actually gonna um, take my phone off of the holder and give you a better look at it. A closer look. I also turned the light off so there isn't so much of a um, glare. Here's kind of what I've drawn. I think this looks good. Each piece is cuttable, each piece is not too long and fragile. So I'm gonna go with this. So the next step is I'm going to take another piece of this paper and put this one over it. I'm gonna put carbon paper in between and I'm gonna trace this entire pattern. But before I finish tracing, I'm gonna number each piece. So both of my um, patterns will be numbered. One of them will act as my template, and the other one I will cut out, out each individual piece. So I will do that next. Look what I have done. I kept staring at this and trying to figure out how I wanted to do this. Um, and sometimes that's what it takes, just stare at it, but don't cut glass until you know what you wanna do. Um, I feel pretty confident now. Obviously I have to retrace this. I got all kinds of scribbles but I know um, what I've got going on now. So as you can see, I cut another piece of paper that's underneath it, and then I have the carbon paper uh, with the ink side down. I have my original one that I started uh, tracing. So now I'm going to trace this so I have a template and then one piece that I'm going to cut the pattern pieces from. And the template is probably gonna be this one um, just because um, I want my pattern pieces to be real crisp and nice. So I'm going to trace next. And notice I taped um, the four sides so my pattern does not shift. And to keep my center bevel line straight, I'm going to just go ahead and trace the bevel again. So four 
31 cut pieces. Let's hope for the best. Let's hope that this one underneath looks pretty good. I see a couple spots I missed drawing, but I think, let me take a better look at this. Um, this is gonna look good. Um, I missed just a couple lines, so I'm gonna fix this up and then take a better look at it. Here are my two patterns. The top one I am going to leave and use it as my template and this bottom one I'm gonna cut out each piece and use those as my pattern pieces and then we'll be ready to cut glass. Here's what my project looks like now. I have cut all the pieces, all the pattern pieces apart. What's to the right there I have already traced onto the glass here. I cut that sheet of glass, that six square foot sheet of glass in half. So there's three square feet. Here's the other three square feet. I drew the pattern pieces onto the back. So I'm ready to start cutting. day Wednesday I got all the rough cutting done tomorrow I'll start with the grinding and foiling possibly the soldering of the six square feet of glass that's all I had left over um, and I did recut two pieces and there's all the pieces that I cut so have a good evening everyone I will see you again in the morning it's Thursday and I just finished all the grinding and I put the squares back around the entire perimeter of the piece. My biggest concern is making sure that there's a straight line on all sides. I want each, all the glass to meet up to the square. So if there's any gaps at this point, I want it to be within the piece and not on the outside. So I want a straight line here all the way around. So I wanna make sure that it is really meeting up with all the sides of the square, which it looks like it's doing pretty good. So I am ready for the foiling. So here is my piece all foiled. Now I'm ready for the soldering. I'll put a square around this again, but I think it's looking pretty good. I'm really excited to see this in the window and see the sun shine through it. Happy Friday evening, everyone. I have a surprise for you. I finished the piece. Um, I put a zinc frame around it. I decided to make this the end of part one of my working with bevels. I figure I'm at about 30 minutes. I showed you how to put the bevels together. I showed you how to draw a pattern. The next video, part two, I wanna show you what this piece looks like in the sunlight. It's already getting dark here, so I can't do that right now. Um, and I also wanna show you about framing. This piece is already pretty large. Um, so I just put a zinc frame on it. Normally I will frame it with bevels and glass and then the zinc frame or sometimes I put a wood frame on it. But almost always I do frame with bevels and or glass, more glass. However, this glass is so beautiful and the bevel in the center is already so large that I figure I have enough going on. I don't need more bevels or anything fancy. I'm just going to let the glass and the center bevel speak for itself. So on Monday, I said that I wanted to get all five of um, those bevels finished by the end of the week and challenge myself. It's good to have goals. Um, sometimes things happen. For example, um, I'm running a business and I happen to be pretty busy this week with people in and out, which makes it hard for recording. And I try to leave work at a reasonable time. So um, I feel like I got a good start. 
And so with the next video, part two, I'm going to focus on the framing. I will introduce all the glass and show you how I'm doing the pattern, but I'll probably fast forward through the parts that I explained in this video. And again, if you are new to stained glass and you want to know how it works from start to finish, all five steps, I have a 55 minute video which goes through all the steps of the stained glass process. Um, and so if you have any questions or need a reference, go back to that first video and I explain everything to you there. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Um, I'm ending my week, um, this challenge today because tomorrow morning I have a bunch of little girls coming in for a birthday party. I have family coming in. We're going to do some snowmobiling. So I will start on these bevels again next week and I will see you then. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend.